Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome back to more oxygen not included in the super duper grouper base. All right, so we have managed to make good use of an anti-entropy thermo nullifier in order to start refining our metals at a much, much more efficient rate and save a lot of materials. This thing's honestly been amazing for us. And the more I think on it, the more it's really a marvel of technology because it completely violates all the laws of thermodynamics and stuff, you know? I mean, you know how it works. Like, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. Well, the anti-entropy thermal nullifier literally just voips thermal energy into who knows what. It literally destroys it. So, we're going to be seeing this place getting really, really, really cold as time goes on, which is going to keep us going with the metal refinery for a while. This thing actually can remove 80k DTUs of thermal energy out of the room, whereas this thing, I think, only produces, what was it, 16? So, th yeah, th this place is going to be getting really cold. If I want to, I could run some additional stuff through here, like, let's say, a cool steam vent. Uh, we had one, well, there's another one up over here, actually. But I'm looking at this one and thinking we could actually just start making use of that, cool down some water, toss it into the pool. That would wouldn't be a terrible idea for us. But here's the really crazy thing. We've got a second one. I noticed this down over here. We have a second anti-entropy thermal nullifier and it's really close to the first one. This is so convenient. So yeah, for a lot of the game, as long as we can continue producing some hydrogen, we are going to be set as far as thermal management. It's just a matter of routing everything, which admittedly is a challenge. Like this area in particular has gotten very, 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 very warm, and we probably are going to want to cool some of this down. So I might decide that I want to start siphoning up some of the gases and just run it through this room in order to help ch uh, chill it down a little bit. And then we can just send it right back up and keep all this stuff running nice and happy. I don't know, maybe. I mean, we're about to build up a big coal generator room, and since I have about 50 tons of coal, I'm hoping that's going to be enough to kind of keep things going for at least a little bit. Though we are producing at least a fair bit of natural gas, and that's been enough to kind of keep some of this going as well. So, I don't know. We'll see. I do want to enclose this room, because one thing we could consider doing, and I'm not sure it's the right decision, but we could make this into a power uh, station by adding in a power control station, right? Make this into one big room, toss this thing in there, and then we'd be able to start producing microchips in order to boost the power output of the generators. However, however, for our electrical engineers, I'm pretty sure they spend a fair bit of time actually working on this. It might end up that it takes too much labor to be worth it. I don't really know. Regardless, I want to try to get some of this stuff set up so I know that I've got plenty of power, at least until I get to such a point where I can start taking, like, let's say, uh, oil and produce petroleum and natural gas out of that, and therefore keep these guys running all the time. How are we doing up over here, by the way, with the Drekos? This room is cooling down quite a bit. We've gotten down to about... about 20-something degrees over here. The problem is the mealwood is still fairly warm because the farm tiles are still quite warm. Yeah, um, we've cooled down the room a lot, but it's still not enough to get the mealwood up and running. That's not a huge deal. Um, the Drekos are fine. They are still eating up a lot of my bristle blossoms, so I'm not really too worried about it. I actually feel like we should probably go ahead and kill off some of these Drekos over here. They're eating up food that I don't want them to eat. Let's keep the shiny Drekos up and running. But yeah, um, hmm. Small issue, small issue, but it's all right. It's all right. We are fine on food for at least a while, thanks to all of our mushrooms. We can hold on to this for a while, and it's not going to be a problem. Viola over here is doing a great job getting the metal refinery up and running. She's just going to run through a whole bunch of these different jobs. It's really been no problem. Why are we out of coolant? Uh, answer, some is on its way back up after going through the cooling process. Reminder, it's coming out at about 55 degrees Celsius, and it is going back into the system at closer to less than 20, actually, right now. Uh, I know it warms up a little bit as time goes on, but again, this is where the liquid shutoff comes in. If it's too warm, just sends it right back in here until this goes through another loop, and then all of a sudden, we're going to have ourselves a fair bit more cold water. I'm still keeping my eyes out, by the way, for some replacement dupes. Uh, well, I say replacement. Some additional dupes. I do want to toss a few more into the colony. That said, I'm still not willing to take just anybody who comes my way. I need to find someone who's actually going to end up being pretty good for me. So, we'll be selective about it. In the meantime, an extra 500 kilograms of plastic. Like, I can't possibly say no to that. That's fantastic. Okay, we've got our coal generators up and running probably just in time. Let's see if this worked from a room overlay perspective. It did not. What do we need to create? Where is it? Power plants. We need 
the power control station, and then the overall size. Yeah, it's about the right size. So let's go to stations over here. Power control station. Unfortunately, it takes up a fair bit of room, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and get that sucker set up. And let's also place down a storage bin over here so we can start storing all of our coal in a nice, convenient location. And there it is. So now if we go to rooms, we have a power plant. Excellent. Okay. So, Power Plant um, is now going to allow us to start making use of this station. The station is going to require some refined metal in order to make these microchips so we can get more value out of some of our generators. Now, we could have done something like this similarly for our natural gas. I'd have to rearrange everything to make a room that actually is the right size, but... We could technically do that. For now, though, I think I'd be happy just experimenting to see how much more power we'll gain out of a coal generator. Because remember, we have a finite amount of coal to work with. So I need to make sure this goes pretty far. I mean, the same could be true about natural gas, but it's especially true right now with coal. Because if we ever run out of that, well, then we're kind of doomed. I'm going to set this thing for coal, if I can remember what is considered to be. There we go. Consumable ore. This is going to be a high priority. We're going to build an auto sweep over here as well so that people don't need to come over this direction. This thing will only request coal once it gets below a certain direction, and the coal sweeper can automatically do this. I don't know, I'm looking for ways to try and automate stuff a little bit more. For example, it's been pretty nice having the auto sweeper over here by the fertilizer, but people are having to waste so much time running down over here to grab the fertilizer once it's been created. We may want to consider at some point moving on to some more automation, such as conveyor belts. Now, that's a whole new thing I haven't had to worry about before, because I don't think that existed the last time I played Oxygen Not Included. So that's going to take a very long time to do, but it would be great to just automatically sweep up and transport these uh, goods, especially fertilizer, and have them shipped somewhere up over here, saving me a lot of travel time. So what is Alpha doing right now? I think Alpha finishes getting a microchip. So we used up some refined gold, and it is now taking a very, very, very long time to get this thing set up. Okay, it is producing 9 kDTUs of, of heat, and it is producing 600 watts of energy. Once she is done, how much is it going to start producing for me? The answer is 900. So it's a 50% uh, improvement with these uh, microchips. And how much did it take in order to make this work? How many uh, kilograms? 5 kilograms. So five kilograms of refined material and then a lot of labor time getting it set up is all we need in order to increase our power production from coal. Therefore, the value of coal by 50%. That's still a little bit hard to accept just because that's a long time for Alpha to sit down over here. But I mean, hey, if this helps solve my power needs for a bit longer, that's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Hey, look at this. Uh, a new researcher. I'm not liking that noodle arms thing with the strength, but I mean, another researcher wouldn't be bad because I actually do need to get some more research done pretty soon. I think this is going to be a new duplicate for the team. Let me find a name. Red Velvet Kitty it is. Excellent. All right. Well, welcome to the base. We have a room set up for you. Everything's ready to go. You smelled the flowers instantly. We're going to go ahead and say that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, we have another researcher. We need to, of course, make sure that we get some skills set up for you actually make use of all of that. Um, mostly I want to be moving toward things like some applied sciences research because this is something we're actually going to be needing pretty soon. We need to start going on to tier 3 science research. Only Alpha can do that right now, but it's going to be nice having a backup. Okay, let's see if this bottle thing works. I'm going to dump a bit of water over here. We're just going to dump some water on the floor. That's all I'm here to do. And then after that, don't even worry about this. We're not going to accept any additional liquid. I just want to dump something on the floor. Something that can absorb the heat out of here a little bit faster in order to cool, uh, cool off the mealwood. It still says it's not good enough. What happened? The carbon dioxide's gone? Wait a minute, what? Why would the carbon dioxide be completely gone? Hold on, what's happening over here? I know that we're dumping more into the system, but I thought we had a lot more than this. Uh, okay. Well, we've cooled this stuff off successfully. That's the good thing. So the water is a far more effective conductor of the heat. So it's drawing energy out of the farm tile and into the water, as long as the water is a little bit cooler, which, to be honest, it's not even that great. It's like 28 degrees. I was hoping it was going to be a bit warmer coming out of this system, but apparently not. Well, we can always mop it up and do this again if we have to, though, so that's not a huge deal. Um, I'd still like to understand, though, why we've lost all of my carbon dioxide. We very badly need to keep that in here. So over here in the canister emptier, let's go ahead and say carbon dioxide. We need to enable the auto bottling feature, I believe, because now we have a small gas pump just kind of piping up some of this relatively cool carbon dioxide. I mean, 25 degrees. 
into a canister filler over here. So we can go ahead and just pump out a quick canister, like so. And that has one kilogram of carbon dioxide. It is not a lot, but it should be enough. Well, okay, a couple of those canisters should be enough to kind of fill the bottom of this area out again. And then the mealwood should start activating. And once the mealwood's back up and running, we can get my dang Drekos out of the bristle farm. So let's see how much of a difference this makes. We are pumping out carbon dioxide, which is a much denser gas. So I'm hoping that this is going to fill up nicely. Uh, how much more do you even have to go out? Holy crud, is this too much? One kilogram can't be too much carbon dioxide, can it? Uh, let's set this down to one for now. We're gonna disable the auto bottle feature. I do not want to continue doing this until the gases have a chance to all resettle themselves. But yeah, you can see the mealwood is starting to reactivate now. Okay, so is the auto sweeper working as intended? It sure as heck looks like it. All we're doing is just dropping off a whole bunch of coal over here right now. And as soon as these things start getting below a certain level or we no longer need some power, it should automatically get replenished with coal. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that this area is basically taken care of for a while. The only thing we can really benefit from is finding a way to cool this whole room off before it gets a little bit out of control, you know what I mean? How are we doing over here, by the way? It's getting a lot colder now. Um, we ran the metal refinery a couple times and let it sit. It got down to minus 50, ran it like two more times. Now it's back up to zero and cooling down fast. So we kind of need to just stagger ourselves with this thing. That's what I'm learning. You just do a few runs, let it cool down, do a few runs and boom, you're done. What the heck has happened over here? Now all the hydrogen is completely gone. Am I losing gas somewhere? Is like the thermoregulator literally losing gas? Um, I don't see any evidence of like hydrogen starting to leak out over here. Yet somehow the density of my gas continues to drop drastically. Oh, I'm gonna feel like an absolute idiot somehow. I just know it, but I really don't think I understand where the problem's coming from here. Somehow we have eliminated hydrogen out of the system and we're losing carbon dioxide as time goes on. It's like it's literally being destroyed, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I really couldn't tell you what the heck is going on here. Well, while I try to figure some of that out, let's start prepping for the next big project I've got going for us. So we're not going to go for this anti-entropy nullifier right now, but something I do want to do is start working on research for Tier 3 technology. So we need the material science research right over here. We also need more material science research. Now, this is something that didn't exist when I played Oxygen Not Included last time, a long time ago. Uh, but now what you have to do is start harvesting radiation and then shooting rad bolts into a special machine, which is going to conduct your uh, research for you. Now, there's lots of different ways that we'd be able to get radiation at some point. In the early game, the easiest thing is to probably make use of the wheeze wart, because remember, this stuff is producing some rads per cycle. We just have to harvest some of this up and then shoot bolts into whatever our system's going to be. So I think over here could make for a pretty decent area for us to set up some of that materials research. Yes, it's in a very cold biome, but at least temporarily for some early game technologies, I think this is going to work out fine for us. First round of research is already complete. Turns out having two researchers is gonna be very nice. Thank you, Alpha and Kitty. All right, so let's go to our stations. I think that's what we're looking for. There it is, Materials Studies Terminal. Okay, so you see that little weird kind of vortex symbol on the left on this thing? That is where it's going to receive rad bolts. So we need to set this up in an area where we will be able to shoot this up. I'm thinking what we could do is simply have like some ladders come down this way, kind of create a tunnel where we can start shooting some rad bolts up over here once we're able to collect it. And from there, we also are gonna need just some basic tiles, I think. I'm not really worried about whether it conducts any heat. That doesn't strike me as important. And then let's go ahead and get some scaffolding set up over here as well. What is going on over here? No, wait, hold on. Really, what's going on? Uh, Carbon dioxide, I think, might be l liquefying? We are liquefying carbon dioxide? That's how freaking cold it is over here? Oh, well, yeah, it's minus 100 degrees Celsius. Well, freaking no wonder, oh my god. All right, it got cold. Uh, if you were wondering if it got cold, the answer is yes, it got freaking cold. Holy crap, it's liquefying the gas. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly never expected to be able to do that. That's pretty awesome. Uh, here's a problem I wasn't expecting. Polluted water 
somehow got into the system. I'm guessing because it got too freaking cold. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So there's clearly something else I really should have added into this system that I did not, and that is a temperature sensor with a gas shutoff valve so that we would stop putting any hydrogen into the system if it got too cold. Because amazingly, I think that my radiant liquid pipes cracked. Yeah, I messed this whole thing up. We're gonna have to fix this whole dang thing now. Ugh! Oh my gosh, we even have liquid chlorine over here. That's how cold everything freaking got. Oh, wow. Wowzas. All right, all right. Well, you know something? Uh, one step at a time. Let's go for something involving radiation. There it is. So we can get a rad bolt generator, which attracts radiation and creates rad bolts. Uh, and then we can have this automatically shoot up in this general direction. I think we need to deconstruct a couple of ladders, maybe dig a little bit more ice out of the way to make it as easy as possible. And what's going to happen is we are going to power this sucker, attract radiation. You see the little arrow over there? It's going to shoot the radiation in a uh, concentrated bolt up into the material study terminal, at which point we'll then be able to start conducting some research. Well, this apparently isn't going to work quite as well as I hoped it was going to. So, I am now starting to generate rad bolts. This is happening. We're providing a fair bit of power over here, like 480 watts to this sucker, and it is generating up some of those rad bolts. However, uh, apparently, the material studies terminal needs a tile underneath here in order for this to work. And as far as I know, um, none of these tiles I can place, such as a mesh tile, allows a rad bolt to shoot through it. Might be wrong on that point, but I don't know of anything. So you know what I have to do now is deconstruct this, move it over somewhere else, and then what I can do instead is redirect the radiation using a rad bolt deflector, which receives a rad bolt and then shoots it off in a different direction. So this thing will ga gradually get rad bolts from the wheeze wart, shoot it, deflect it, and into the material study terminal it goes. And then I'll be able to start doing more research. Okay, do we have this all set up now correctly? I believe so. I think we accidentally shot a rad bolt out and did nothing with it, but there we go. So now this thing is gonna start gradually building up and the more radiation is here, the faster it's going to accumulate. Then once it gets to 50, it's gonna shoot this thing off into the deflector, which I have now redirected to the right, which is going to shoot directly into the input, and this thing will be able to start storing up some rad bolts. Okay, we now have unlocked tier 3 research, and over time, a long time actually, um, we are going to be able to do some high level research. You know what comes to mind is something I'd really like to research? That would be transit tubes. There they are. See, you can see here it takes not only some of the regular research we're familiar with, but also some of the new stuff. Let's do it! Here comes our first round of rad bolts. Pew, pew, pew! There it is. See? Did you miss it? Because that was it. That's all there was to it. Okay, we have once again achieved a vacuum in this area. I've got a thermo sensor, plus we have our gas shut off ready to go. Now I just need to go through here and hook everything back up, and we should be able to reactivate this system. Turns out it is really powerful, um, if you let it just sit for a while, which I regret doing, but we've learned our lesson, we know what to do, or rather not to do next time. Let's go ahead and flood this room with hydrogen once again, there we go. The higher the density, the more thermal energy can be stored, or rather can be removed in this area, so we'll go ahead and let this sucker fill up until it's basically at full pressure. Okay, so with this sucker set back up, we're at 4.7 degrees Celsius. If I swap this around so it sends a green signal as long as we are below 50 degrees Celsius, ba-boom, no. Wait, what am I missing here? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Automation, gas shut off, pipe blocked. Where is the problem here? Oh, right. Never mind, hey, never mind, hang on, we just don't have this hooked up. There we go, all right, now we're gonna start siphoning some of this stuff through. So as long as we are above minus 50 Celsius, you know what, let's just be safe and make this like minus 30 Celsius or so, then this thing can continue to operate. But once it gets to that point, I wanna come back to this and reevaluate because we may very well want to shut this sucker off at a higher or a lower temperature. 
I'm not sure. But with this thing now running in a much more intelligent way, my next goal for this video before we end things is to set up a cool steam vent and start chilling some water. We want some water to go through the system, get nice and cold, and get dumped back into the water tank. It is finally time for us to get some infinite water set up. So case in point, the temperature has now reached... Uh-oh, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's, what's, what's going on? Why are we still siphoning? Okay, we are no longer siphoning more through here. It is shut off, unfortunately, because there's still some in the uh, gas pipe. It's continuing to get colder. So yeah, we need to stop sending a signal at like minus like 10 or something and then stop. Um, because otherwise, this thing's going to continue running for a while and continuing to get cold until we've exhausted all of the hydrogen left in this pipe. Oh, God. All right, we're going to get really freaking cold unless Alpha can pump a little bit of hot water into this system, which she can. So we're about to save ourselves before we go down to like a minus 100 and then cause some issues again. There we go. Saved. Oh, gosh. Dang it. No, not cold. Da no! You know, if there was ever a time to go ahead and reload an autosave, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's it right there because uh, <laughs> I do not want to go through the trouble of piping that dang room out again. Honestly, this might really be a problem because this thing only takes up 10 grams of hydrogen per second. So uh, even if I shut this thing off at 20 degrees Celsius, it's still gonna have enough heat going through it or rather, enough hydrogen going through it that it's going to continue to drop this down to a ridiculous temperature, and we're still going to look at some cold damage. For oh, God's sake. Um. Well, let's go ahead and process a little bit more here and try to just offset this a smidge earlier. This is not going to be an issue once I do start pumping some water down through here successfully. Like, we'll have enough water going through frequently that this thing will probably be able to keep running almost 24-7. But still, dude, still. Oh my gosh, did we finally finish with transit tube technology? I think we did, it took several cycles to build up enough rad bolts for that to actually matter, but I think we actually have transit tubes. Okay, well that's great. Uh, out of curiosity, how much plastic have we managed to gather up? I'm gonna go with it's probably not enough for anything incredible. Well, okay, 3,300 kilograms is pretty decent all in all, it's just, I'm pretty sure I need, like, several times that to have a meaningful tube network. Up over here in this chamber, I think it's time to finally dig out the cool steam vent. Let's get this sucker freed up and see if we can analyze this thing before it has a chance to go too far. Oh, dang it, this thing's already got rising pressure. Well, that didn't freaking take long. All right, so now we're about to have a bunch of scalding steam in here. Dang it all the heck. I wanted, mm, I wanted to perform an analysis. I wanted to perform an analysis before, no. Oh, now we got extremely hot scalding steam. Right, um, all right. Alpha, what's what's your temperature looking like right now? Um, body temperature is increasing bit by bit. I mean, yeah, no, you definitely should not be in there right now. Um, dang it all the freaking heck. This is so annoying when this happens. I, uh, mm. Alpha, Alpha, I see you trying to run into the chamber right when I am, <laughs> right when I'm currently putting in this, uh, this tile. Don't you freaking dare. You stay the heck out of there. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on down over here? Why is the temperature hot? Hold on. Plumbing. Where are we? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, we have found a bit of a hiccup here, um, where the, uh, water is apparently too full. Oh. Okay, um, yeah, it's because we completely filled up these reservoirs, so while they themselves are still very, very cold, some water's been sitting here and doing nothing. Right, um, uh-oh. What's gonna be the best way to kind of force this system to continue here? Um, great question. I can try to disconnect some of this, but I don't think that there's any pressure that's gonna keep this stuff going. Unless... Maybe if I empty out this pipe, do you think? I could try it. Let's extract the pipe contents. It's possible that's going to force some to move forward and that's going to open up space behind and kind of keep the whole system moving. All right. Well, in the meantime, over here at the steam vent, we are now officially extracting some very hot water at 98 degrees Celsius. This thing, I think, is going to emit probably around 110 so, uh, obviously that's gonna be pretty darn toasty. 
Let's keep an eye on this stuff. So it's going to head down over here, and just like before, we have a liquid shutoff valve system where if the temperature gets to an unacceptable level, it's going to simply keep routing around through here. Uh, we got a bit of cold damage, and it's filling water in over here. Oh my god, why? Why, though? Come on! Okay, what this tells me is maybe the issue we're having is the temperature is simply too great of a differential. Um, so what can happen, even though technically the materials I'm building this stuff out of should be able to survive uh, even very low or very high temperatures if the temperature shock comes through, right? Where you have a very hot pipe and extremely cold water goes through it. You know, even though those extremes should have been fine on their own, the sudden change in temperature can cause some breakage. So maybe that's what's happening here, is I need to be cooling this water off at least a little bit to something more acceptable. Then we can start pumping this stuff through, and maybe then it doesn't break the pipes. So let's see what happens this time. Now, I'm still highly concerned that we're going to find ourselves in a situation where it's going to get down to these pipes over here and it's still going to break because these pipes are going to get pretty darn cold and then have to go through a very sudden change in temperature. But I'm using this like a radiator in hopes that it's going to at least reduce the impact a little bit, but I somehow doubt that it's going to be enough. All right, let's see what happens. Is it going to break immediately, or is it going to get through here? Actually, kind of, sort of, um, but it's not changing as much as I might have liked. Let's see. It's only losing a few degrees here and there. That ain't going to cut it, I don't think. Um, let's see. By the time it gets to this point, we've dropped down to about 93 degrees. <sighs> yeah, not good enough. What happens if a single packet goes through? Okay, actually, it does cool down a bit at this point. And then it's coming out at 50 degrees, which means it's going to shut off and go right back through here. Okay, so the, this is still working. But can this handle the raw energy output of all of this water? Well, let's find out. The temperature in here is rapidly increasing, which means now we are going to allow some extra hydrogen to come through, which is going to start cooling this area off. And what's likely going to end up happening here is this water is going to get stuck in a loop for a long time until this thing is able to satisfactorily drop it down again, which it's trying to do, but it's taking a while. So I'm not convinced I like this system, to be honest. Um... It's definitely going to cool down water in packets. I just think it's going to take a very, 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 very long time to get it down sufficiently in packets. Yeah, okay. This will work for now, for the absolute now, but it's not a great system. Um, we are going to have to come up with something better eventually. So how are things looking over here? Did we simply move through the polluted water? It looks like we did, actually. Removing a small amount was enough to kind of change up the pressure, so now this stuff is going to continue cycling through. Not very quickly, mind you, but slowly but surely it is getting there, and some of the cold water is now once again entering into the system. Okay, good. So all of a sudden we are once again starting to get some cold water. Unfortunately, you can see that in some of these liquid reservoirs, we've now increased in temperature by... A lot. Like a shocking amount. No, no, no. That's just the outside. The inside is still minus... Minus six degrees. So that's actually not so bad. We're okay on this front. Okay, so crisis averted over here. We just need to give it a second to kind of recycle itself. The interior water here is certainly starting to increase. You can see it's up to three degrees Celsius instead of the minus six it was before. So we're going to have to figure out some sort of automation system and thermo um, uh, temperature reading system in order to vent this out once it gets too hot of a temperature so we'll be able to start filling it in again with nice cold water from the slush geyser but that's something I have to worry about a little bit later I really <laughs> I really think that I am done for the day um, I, I'm not super thrilled with how this has all turned out is the best I can say it's not quite worked out the way that I wanted it to where oh god all the hydrogen starting to come out over here well, we're about to pump a bunch of hydrogen into this uh, into the base. That's probably fine. So yeah, I don't think this is going to be a great long-term system. It's You can see that it's working, but we're going to have to come up with something better eventually. 
In the meantime, at the very least, we got a lot of these systems fixed and figured out. And we are going to start extracting some water out of this cool steam geyser. So the foundation is laid. We just need something more efficient. All right. Well, thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, even if it didn't quite work out entirely the way that I wanted it to. If so, I would ask that you hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell. And I will see you guys next time. Ha <laughs> ha!